This is this evening's, one of this evening's main supporting bouts for the South African Junior Lightweight title, of course. The champion, Untabeli, the head man, Amshlope, comes up against the Transvaal champion, Joseph Romaswe, a ring announcer, Lucky McElhaney. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the South African Junior Lightweight champion, brought to you by Golden Gloves and IA2 Boxing Promotions, sponsored by Jumbo Cash and Perry, here in Fortier University. The judges for this bout are Bezos, Makaluza, Matigra, and Tarkov. The dead man on the ring is Dabo Spongo. Introducing the principals. On my left, right, wearing red and white trunks, we weighing 57,90 kgs, with a professional record of 13 fights, 11 wins, 2 losses, and 9 kills. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the Johannesburg Transvaal Champion, Joseph Ramaswe. In the opposite corner, wearing black and red trunks, weighing 57,90 cages, with the professional levels of 31 points, 26 wins, 4 losses, 21 by means of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the South African Junior Red Champion, Ntobeli Pitman Mkhape. Ladies and gentlemen, are fighting for battle rounds in the junior lightweight champion. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jumbo Cash and Curry all the way. Thank you. Boxers. Boxers. I expect. I think Bert and Luisa, what makes this fight pretty interesting is the fact that Ramaswe has, amongst his nine stoppage victims, uh, Leshla Honolo Ludwava, the current South African junior featherweight champion. That was a very, very good win for him. Indeed it was. Of course that was in a lighter weight division because he's moved up to junior light now. But I agree with you, Nick, this is a very formidable challenger and uh, he could give the champion a few problems, Luisa. Yes, I think so, because both boxers come this evening with uh, very impressive knockout records. Both of them are punchers, but uh, both of them Oops. are known to have uh, a bit of glass jaws. Well, if they have got glass jaws and they're both punches, uh, I'll be surprised if this goes 12 rounds. But Schlope looked quite impressive in his last fight, his defense of his title against Lapor and Doe. That was a good performance for the hitman. Yes, uh, it was also a very narrow win, Nick. Uh, you might remember the uh, Indo camp were very unhappy with that uh, decision. But um, you're right, he, he, at least he went to 12 rounds and he fought all of those 12 rounds. And I was happy with the decision at the ringside. Absolutely. I mean, he went 12 rounds as far as we were concerned ringside with a physically stronger challenger. No question, Indo is a, is a very, very strong fighter. He didn't have the boxing skills to stay with him shortly there. Yes, and um, Shorby even dropped him. And I also believe that Mkhlope did enough to deserve the decision. And uh, I think today with him against Ramaswe, a good puncher, a good challenger from the transfer. It uh, looks like uh, it's a question of who does what first to determine the control and uh, maybe even a win in the fight. Well, I'm sure the viewers have noticed that uh, Mkhlope, he's in black, the champion, with a south four, he's got his uh, right foot forward. And that's always a, a difficult uh, opponent for the orthodox box of the sword. Simbulisa Slapa of Fort Hare University Sports Complex. Simbulisa Mimi. Good to be in the Nile Zone Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. Good to be in the Nile Zone South Africa. He's already found the range on round one, looking for the opportunity to let his punches go. And Ramaswi staying on the outside, he hasn't really closed the gap, and I think he's going to have to do that if he's going to become effective. Well, he's had a severe reach disadvantage, I would say. He's got to close that gap. And Chopi will be very happy if he keeps the fight on the end of his right jab. That's just where he wants uh, Ramaswi. Some years ago. 
um, Schlopper was involved, Luis, in, in a rather bad accident, wasn't he? And he had to uh, stop boxing for quite some time. Yes, it was a motorbike where he broke his leg. I don't know what part of the leg was broken, but it was broken. And after oh. that layoff, it was in fact to this very ring that he made his return here at the Fort Hare University. Yes, I mean, yeah, he looked an impressive back. When it comes to you, you're going to take him with the left back, back. you're going to keep him at the end of your punch. You're going to go on. Keep your hand. What? Keep your hand. What? Keep your hand. 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 En je hebt amper een foto gemaakt, moet ik komen naar zijn rechter aan doen, oké? Okay? Ja. ja. Moet ik komen naar zijn rechter aan doen? Meneer wil het woord niet, vaart jou oké? Oké. Okay. Okay. Ja. Bam, bam. Round two of the South African title fight then, the champion Develium Schlope having a good opening round. He controlled the fight through his jab. And it's up to Ramaswe really to get inside. He looks very tentative and a little tight at this stage of the fight. Working sweetly for the champion. The Sloppy really sharp shooting here again in round two. And uh, Ramaswe even trying to unsettle the champion with this sort of bob and weave. You see him going down almost to his haunches. I don't know I expect the referee to warn him about that. He can't, he can't go down too low, not below the waistline of the bat. Looks like Mtobe is, uh, is gaining more confidence with each second as the round go, as the fight goes. But uh, Namazo caught him with a good right hand there, but Mtobe took it well and then he's back in action. There's a big swinging right hand. There's another one from Ramaswe. Well, he's got to punch his way inside as well. No good just showing movement. He's got to punch his way inside to it. And there's signs now he's starting to open up a bit. And of course, the right hand has always been the classical part of the side. So, not surprising that uh, we must be letting his right hand go. Uh, one way of unsettling the champion. And he's got to do something. He's now beginning to put pressure on something we hadn't seen earlier. He's throwing more right hands and he's starting to unsettle the jumper. He brings his punches from a long way back, does the challenger, though. I'd be surprised if um, Schlobe doesn't see uh, see these shots coming. Well, he certainly saw that one because he slipped beneath it. Now, this is really where Ramaswi wants to be up close and working inside. But he has started to make the champion feel his presence now in the ring with body shots and that overhand right hand. And he has started to score. Schlope doing no work inside there at all. He's just trying to tie up uh, Ramaswe.
Jacob or Joseph Ramaswe who has been running this program. Jacob also won the fight. Now again, again, Zima, the second one, the last one, Pesu, went to open shop. The best Kali legend, the man named the Wakala is the answer to swing. I knew that Pesu, Pesu, the only one in the limit. That's the only shop. The only one there. The Sisu. Pants. Gogo, Jomo, Gogo, na, na go ako na uramaso. E kola kola, e pina ako na gila nito. We have to go na wote kung kung kuli niya ita. Nindem kula sa kuna na Jomo. Bosa si Bonile. E bosa bona ka disi na Jomo chuga mo ka. Well, I guess it was inevitable. It was always likely to happen. In fact, it could have happened the other way as well. And uh, with Ramaswi really letting that right hand go, I guess it was only a question of time before it connected. And it certainly did there in round two. And now look at the pressure that the challenger is putting on the champion. Well, this has certainly brought the fight to life. Ramaswe comes out of his confidence, out of his corner, full of confidence, but some nice counter punching on the ropes there by Amshlopi. Ramaswe doesn't want to get careless. This could be a big mistake if he thinks that Amshlopi has not recovered and uh, he lets his defenses drop a little bit. He could get caught, and he certainly was caught on those ropes to start the round. Ramaswe from the Munti to the Pale, and now into the Munti. We are now on the Munti number two. The Abetan Amanda in Wazir. Now we're listening to the Munti of Fela Pansi. We chose the Ramaswe. We're going to move on to the Munti of Fela Pansi. We're going to move on to the Munti of Fela Pansi. We're going to move on to the Munti of Fela Pansi. We're going to move on to the Munti of Fela Pansi. We're going to move on to the Munti of Fela Pansi. We're going to move on to the Munti of Fela Pansi. We're going to move on to the Munti of Fela Pansi. We're going to move on to the Munti of Fela Pansi. We're going to move on to the Munti of Fela Pansi. Ramaswe was trying to pick up from where he left off in the second. 
But I think the warning sign was there for Ramos where he cannot afford to just totally drop his defence in going for attack here. He's got to respect them, Schlopper. Schlopper is off for the South African champion. Surprises with me with the Mustafa badge today is that he is two or three people that fight for this sport. Every time he's been uh, in, uh, been put under pressure, he has uh, faltered a little bit. But today he looks more prepared and more confident. He's had real good punches from the house today. Go, punches go, 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 go. He didn't have from his previous two. Don't cross him! Don't cross him now! Yes! And that's kind of past well today. Yes, I must say he's responding very well indeed. He's quite clearly recovered from that knockdown in the second round. And, uh, Bruce, Bruce. Bruce. Is going to have to be careful because he could actually walk into a punch from the and uh, this fight could turn right around. Well, that's what Mshlop is looking for. He is, after all, really a counter puncher. Well, that's the type of fight he likes. Well, once again, it's uh, Mshlop controlling this fight with the right jab. Well, I think it's quite obvious what uh, tactics Ramaswi is using now. Porn obviously have told him to work from behind his jab and then to uh, let the right hand go only afterwards. Reaching for Shlopi, not connecting with those punches. Now, who for that one? Watch, he may come with a second. Just notice Jan Bergman working in the corner of Ramaswe. Well, he's just outside the ring, but he's assisting the corner. Yes, the man in charge there, of course, is Bucky Martins, who is also the trainer of Berkeley. Yes, I mean, uh, the danger signs are on for both boxers because uh, uh, we've just seen young Bergman coming to help his table with Ramaswa. Before that, uh, Ntobeli's father was in uh, Ntobeli's corner, sounding out his advice himself. Very square run here in the start of round five. In fact, I think he is looking at crowding the champion as much as he can, not giving him room to move. That makes a lot of sense, Larissa, because he's got to stay right on top of his but He's doing that now. He's doing it from very behind the jab, you notice. He's doing it very well, Beth. And uh, now he's got, he's got no room to move. And Ramazo is able to dig down and throw the body punches. Those standing square in front of your opponent is always big as in boxing, but sometimes it works in. When you have to crowd and corner your man, you've got to do it. You've got to take the chance if you've got to win. And the uh, muscle is doing just that way. 
scoring that knockdown in the second round really giving a wake-up call to Umtabeli of Schlope, the South African champion and since then the rounds have been pretty even Ramashwe has been looking for that big shot at uh, Schlope's jaw once again but Schlope has counter-punched well on these oh, ropes, oh, he is oh. being crowded, but he's got these little short punches inside that work quite well for him. I see what you're saying. He's putting in some sneaky shots, short shots in, in himself to Ramasu, but at the same time, standing there in those ropes against a dangerous inside fighter like uh, Ramasu, he's now finding himself getting punches that he shouldn't be receiving from, from Ramasu. And uh, a dangerous puncher like Ramasu might not drop him now, but he may wear him down and then in the later round, that may show. Well, up close is where Ramasu wants to be. Hope he looks better for boxing from a distance. Now you watch your hand up, Kevin. Now at close punches, Kevin, in one thing, give me that punch, Kevin. Give me that punch. That's it, Kevin. Give me that punch, Kevin. Give me that punch. You try to turn around. I want to see you aggressive, Galaje. Give me aggressive. Galaje, remember this? Give me aggressive, Galaje. Remember this? I want to be aggressive, Galaje. And you keep. Ten again. Stay on top of that. Some replay from that last round, and you can see the men. A lot of the, the round was fought close up with uh, Ramaswi leaning his head on uh, his chest. All right. All right. All right. Get up. 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 I hear Ziem Guni between rounds asking Mshlope to be more aggressive. That surprises me because uh, Mshlope is not naturally a very aggressive fighter. I don't know if you agree with that, uh, Luisa. Yes, he's not, but uh, I think maybe by that they mean he should use more of his jab. Because he may not move forward, he may throw the jab so that the opening opens open up or he comes so that he can count out his left hand. Because really Mshlope is a puncher, but his main asset is always the new jab to get his opponents on the way for the big right hand and it looks like now he's coming with the jab again and he just got Ramasu with a good left hand yeah, so Slippy can control this uh, fight with his right jab and that's what he's doing here in the sixth the jab is coming, he's sharp shooting with the punch and it's much more effective than it had done earlier and it also gives him the opportunity to let the left hand go when he makes it open with the right hand double him most of the support down here for here University of course is for the South African champion Mtabeliam Schlope, he's from this region Maswe has made the long trip from the Transvaal, Transvaal champion and that was an even now, one knocked down a piece it's a flash knockdown that was Vindage in Schlope two jabs and the left hand as uh, Ramasa came in and uh, it showed, it paid and Ramasa went down in proper. He's taking off again, again he chose the jab and again he chose the left hand and Ramasa hit 
scored the knockdown in the second round uh, it looked a very even fight to that stage and I think uh, a lot of disappointment here ringside too they expected to see uh, Ramaswe go out fighting that's not the way it was I'm afraid well the crowd wouldn't be disappointed because uh, the local man won but uh, I'm afraid Ramaswe is going to have a lot to explain when he gets back to the Transvaal let's get the time from Lucky Makalani ladies and gentlemen Thomas Mann will stop the fight Within two minutes, fifteen seconds in the sixth round, and the winner by technical knockout, and still the South African junior level champion, Mchaveli Hitman Mshape. Well, the Hitman has struck in the sixth round. Surprise ending to that fight, really. A flash knockdown. Ramaswe getting up and deciding not to continue. He retains his South African title. He's getting close to keeping that old buck belt too, isn't he, Luisa? Yes, he is because I think if I'm coming right, this was his fourth defense. He only needs one defense now to keep it. Mr. Mleki George. And Toby comes as the director of sport in South Africa. So a great win for the South African champion. As I say, it came out of the blue really in the sixth round, but uh, he'll take it any way he can. Umtabeliam Schlopek, good win.